it's no secret, there essentially are two presentations on oncologic outcomes, one that's with a surgical bias and one that's with, from a chemoradiotherapy standpoint, and then there are two functional talks. So uh, representing the non-surgical therapy for advanced laryngeal cancer is uh, Professor Robert Haddad from Harvard and the Dana-Farber uh, Institute. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. I want to also thank the organizing committee for inviting me to come in and talk to you uh, this morning about the uh, non-surgical treatment for laryngeal cancer. Obviously, this is one type of, uh, of situation where the multi-D clinic plays a big role. I cannot stress enough the importance of a multi-D clinic as we treat patients with larynx cancer. I would say all head and neck cancer sites, given the fact that many of these patients do have more than one option. And it's not readily apparent what would be the best option for a particular patient. Uh, these are my disclosures. I do sit on the NCCN member, uh, committee that drafts the guidelines for head and neck cancer treatment. Uh, and these are my other disclosures. So 2014, we do have competing options as we treat patients with larynx cancer. Again, we're talking right now about advanced laryngeal cancer. We're not, I'm not discussing the T1N0 or the T2N0. We're talking about the patients with advanced laryngeal uh, cancer. Concurrent chemoradiotherapy that is cisplatinum-based is a standard of care for these patients. Uh, the use of cisplatinum is very important in these patients for those patients who do have a good performance status that can't tolerate this drug. It is not acceptable to compromise chemotherapy delivery just so we can give a less toxic drug. The best agent in head and neck cancer is cisplatinum. Sequential chemoradiotherapy that is based on the TPF regimen, docetaxel cisplatinum 5-FU, is the standard induction chemotherapy regimen in the United States and also in Europe and across the world. Obviously, surgery is the third option that we're gonna hear about or we heard about already, followed by radiation or concurrent chemoradiation depend on the pathological findings. So how do we get to decide between these three options? Who goes for surgery first? Who goes for chemoradiotherapy? Who goes for sequential chemoradiotherapy? It's often a very difficult decision to make. Again, many of the patients we deal with have more than one option, and I'm gonna, at the end, discuss how we might make such decisions. So for larynx and hypopharynx, how do we really, I'm going to review the induction uh, concurrent data. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to review uh, three trials. Two of them are recently published in the past year or two, and the third one has been published a few years back. The Gortec trial is a larynx preservation trial comparing docetaxel platinum 5-FU to platinum 5-FU. The Tremplin trial asked the question of adding an EGFR inhibitor cetuximab to TPF, and the third trial, the important 9111 that was published 10 years ago, showing a larynx preservation advantage for concurrent chemoradiotherapy, this study was updated with a 10-year update last year published in JCO, a very important update that really everyone should read and be familiar with. I'm gonna review these three trials. A quick overview, the TPF data was generated based on two large randomized phase three studies, one from the US, one from Europe. This is the US trial that we ran out of the Dana-Farber comparing TPF to PF in all comers with locally advanced disease, oropharynx, oral cavity, hypopharynx, and larynx, showing that TPF regimen was better than PF. The European uh, uh, study uh, run by Dr. Vermoken out of Europe also compared TPF to PF, but, also, but in this trial, only patients with unresectable poor prognosis disease were enrolled, again showing that the TPF regimen did better. So these two randomized phase three studies essentially established a standard induction chemotherapy regimen, and that's the docetaxel platinum 5-FU. The Gortec trial took now patients with only larynx and hypopharynx patient, uh, cancer, uh, who uh, for surgery would have required the total laryngectomy. Those patients were randomized to TPF or PF. If they did not respond, they went to surgery, which would be a total laryngectomy. If they did respond, they received radiation therapy uh, only. 
Uh, this trial showed that for larynx preservation, also the TPF regimen did better. As you can see here in the yellow curve, TPF regimen 70% larynx preservation in the TPF arm versus 57% in the PFR. So for the induction chemotherapy regimen, for those of you who use induction chemotherapy, there is absolutely no reason at this stage not to use this regimen. This is an effective re regimen for larynx preservation. And as you can see, the survival also was 60% on the TPF arm. And this is another iteration of this uh, same regimen. Now, the Tremplin study published last year in JCO essentially asked a different question. This is a phase two study, and it gave everyone TPF up front. And those patients who did the response to TPF were randomized to one of two treatment regimen, either radiation cetuximab, an EGFR inhibitor, or radiation and cisplatinum at a high dose, 100 milligram every uh, three weeks. So this is a randomization after induction to the responders between an EGFR inhibitor or cetuximab uh, or cisplatinum. And for those patients who did not respond, they proceeded to surgery followed by post-operative radiation therapy. These are the patient's characteristics. This is where we started, 150 patients. Uh, there were few patients who did not respond to induction and per protocol proceeded to surgery that was built into the protocol. There were seven patients who did not respond, were offered surgery but declined, and then the rest of the group was randomized. So between the initial number of patients and those that ended up being randomized, there was a 24% dropout in the number of patients. Now, for the primary uh, endpoint of this trial, the difference between cetuximab and cisplatinum, after TPF, there was no difference between the two treatment arms, as you can see from these curves. Now, these two curves were not necessarily better than what I showed you in the first slide with the Gore-Tex trial when TPF was followed with radiation only. The trampoline observation I would make is that both cisplatinum radiation after TPF, the bolus cisplatinum after TPF, is very toxic. So if you give TPF first, for the medical oncologists in the audience, you should not give bolus cisplatinum during radiation. That becomes a toxic regimen. There was no difference in larynx preservation, larynx function preservation, and overall survival between these two treatment arms. Salvage laryngectomy was only possible in the cetuximab arm on this trial. And as of now, the reference regimens for the future trials in larynx cancer remain the TAX324 and the Gore-Tex regimen. TAX324, which is TPF followed by carboradiation, or the TPF followed by radiation only per the European model. Those remain the reference regimens for now uh, in larynx preservation. What about the 10-year update of 9111? So 9111 is a phase three study that was run out of RTOG. Uh, it's a three-arm study that essentially compared arm A, which is induction chemotherapy followed by radiation, to arm B, which is concurrent chemo radiation, bolus platinum every three weeks, arm C, radiation only. Obviously, there's no surgical randomization on this trial. This is post-VA study. 515 patients randomized. This study initially published in the New York Journal of Medicine in 2003 by the RTOG group, and essentially showing that larynx preservation was best achieved with the concurrent chemoradiotherapy arm. The primary endpoint of this trial is laryngectomy-free survival. For that primary endpoint, there is no difference between induction and concurrent. The five-year overall survival at the initial presentation and publication of this study, the trends were favoring induction chemotherapy, but they were not statistically significant. And those were, those were the curves. The, chemo the chemotherapy-containing regimens did better than radiation alone. Now, the 10-year update is what I'm going to discuss now, and that is an important 10-year update. These are the patients, again, three-arm study, and this is the data. For the primary endpoint, which is laryngectomy-free survival, we continue to see no difference between induction chemotherapy followed by radiation or concurrent chemoradiation. What was really important in this 10-year update is the, 10, is the overall survival. The overall survival is favoring induction chemotherapy at 10 years. The overall survival is 38% in the induction arm. In the concurrent chemo RT arm, the overall survival is 27%. There's an 11% difference in favor of induction chemotherapy. It is not statistically significant, but at least I do feel and many of us do feel that it is clinically meaningful. 
11% advantage for induction chemotherapy. So my RTOG 1191-11 observations for the primary endpoint of laryngectomy-free survival, the 10-year update is 29 versus 24% for induction, not statistically significant. Survival also favoring induction 11%, but also not statistically significant. Larynx preservation favors concurrent chemo RT, but everyone in this room would agree larynx preservation is not an important endpoint in the absence of survival and in the absence of function. Those would be important. Those were not assessed in this trial. There was unexplained increase in death that were unrelated to cancer in the patients who received concurrent chemo RT. The editorial from Dr. Everett Vox and the same issue essentially raised a concern about the toxicity seen with concurrent chemo RT and the trends we are seeing in improving survival in the induction chemotherapy arm. Those are to not, not to be ignored. This is the NCCN guidelines that uh, we worked very hard on writing. Dr. Shah is part of this uh, committee. And you can see here for larynx preservation for non-surgical treatment, concurrent chemo radiotherapy is an option. And also induction chemotherapy followed by definitive radiation or chemo radiation is the other option. My final slide, when you treat patients with larynx cancer, for the non-surgical options, you have more than one option. Concurrent chemo radiotherapy that is cisplatinum based is an option. TPF induction chemotherapy is another option followed by either radiation or chemo radiation. There is no evidence today to support that one approach is clearly superior to the other or inferior. That's what the data tell us today. The choice of therapy is individual depending on the patient's stage, the patient preference, comorbidities, performance status. Uh, high dose chemotherapy requires a patient in good performance status and healthy and robust enough the patient and family support, and also the physician and the institution, institution preference. Thank you.